It's all a grand experiment. Try it and see how it goes. Nose your way in, is that your favorite thing? Yeah, nose our way in. <laughs> Oh, the Exuma water, the swimming pool of the Atlantic. We're headed down to Samson. We're gonna need some internet to order a park. I gotta tell you, I imagine in my mind what it's like to have these emerald waters, but to be out in it, it, it literally is just glowing up from, a, from below. It's, it's quite magical being out here. The colors are stunning. Sometimes it just all comes together perfectly. Catamarans love a beam reach. The wind coming directly from the side. That's when they just fly. And we had perfect conditions coming down the inside of the Exuma chain. Winds from right on the beam at about 22 knots and we're slicing along at around nine knots. In these conditions, we'll typically reef the mainsail. As perfect as it is, all is not well in this picture. For a little context, I'll tell you that on sailboats, you're always battling chafe. Uh, basically, rub and wear spots on sails and lines. It's expensive and often it's avoidable. Now, there's a little problem with this picture. Let's take a look at a couple parts of the rig. Now, you can see that line coming out of the end of the boom and up to the sail. It's going through the sail at the Clue Reef Kringle. It's a metal ring that the line passes through to help shorten the sail. And the line comes out of the boom at the shiv box. Both of those areas can cause a lot of chafe. That pink A shape there should be squashed almost flat. But what's happened is the clue reef line has slipped through its clutch. So basically there's just too much play and that's leading to the chafe. Easy fix though, just go up to the mast and pull that clue reef line taut once again. That'll stop the chafe. which is, would have been in... Hey. <laughs> I think I missed it. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> put the others on? Oh, that feels really nice. Yeah. Way back here, yeah. <laughs> Wait, were you just taking off? Oh yeah, it wasn't connected to the chain. Mm. Ooh. That's all right, we got it. We've done that before. Today's project is to remove this stack pack sail cover that we had built in uh, St. Martin four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. It served us pretty well, but you can see the stitching is coming apart. I don't know if it's UV degradation or what, but it needs some reinforcement and we need to take care of some chafe points as well. So we've got to take it off. I want to try and do it without taking the mainsail off, so that's going to be a bit of a task. 
mainsail is pretty big, pretty heavy. Uh, I'm just going through every inch of the sail bag, finding all kinds of threads that have come out. So I'm reinforcing, I'm adding extra fabric where there's some run rub through spots and I'm testing the Sailrite machine to its max because there's some um, really hard plastic in here. Hi. You've been at it all day long. <laughs> no, I haven't. I went snorkeling at the grotto. So one is here and we're the only one. We were trying to make it sound like you were in here from dawn till dusk. Oh, well I got one side done. Do you want me to do the rest of it? Oh, it's so funny. I don't think you could. What? I thought you said I was really smart. You want to try it? Can I practice? for the finale of the Stack Pack Repack. Here we go. Megan's lovely, lovely stitches. So are you nervous? Yeah. See if your stitches will hold? No, I'm not nervous. No ripping yet. So my advice, when you get your new stack pack, before you install it, just go ahead and reinforce the zipper with a couple of really tight straight stitches and another zigzag stitch. So these guys right here on the captain guy doesn't obviously know what he's doing. So they've got, basically, they're a beam R transom, but there's current that goes back and forth. So what's gonna happen is when we see the tide go in and out, we're gonna swing right across their bow. But we'll have to move. Well, if there's one thing you can count on with the uh, mega yacht crowd, it is jet skis. Morning, noon, and night, they love their personal watercraft. These mega yachts are not cheap to charter. They're spending 50, 60, 70, 100,000 dollars a week to charter these things. And they come all the way out here to this beautiful spot and they run personal watercraft back and forth uh, at 60 miles per hour. This morning street, just after sunrise, has been two, uh, looks like six or seven year olds, uh, just going back and forth, back and forth. I'm sure they're all very nice people, just not very conscientious when it comes to wakes and noise. So we're gonna get a little space. Well, it can be kind of irritating. I gotta remind myself that nobody owns these waters, at least not in the yacht and cruiser crowd. So if the neighbors are getting kind of annoying, it's up to us to take the initiative and move. In this case, we didn't have to move all that far, about five or six miles to the other side of Pipe Key, and we had it all to ourselves. Well, mostly to ourselves, but these neighbors were nice and quiet. Can we open some tuna fish for 
waiting. The shark video? Yeah. I'll share the shark video with you. <laughs> Sunday waffles here. Go live for correspondence with the shark video. Yeah. Those with some uh, ability to get in the water with sharks. <laughs> well, that's what we have. Go they got courage. We should. Well, we can we can watch each other's backs. Let's go down to uh, this sharky water. Yeah. We have to have a, a wingman to have your back. Yeah. Otherwise, you might just get bit. So that it. <laughs> like someone's got a fish on and are heading back up to the surface. You uh, that's like, right. Well, we have to watch out for someone with a spear uh, like this. <laughs> I wore this shirt today because I said, boom, 2020, <laughs> boom, I said, let's go. <laughs> I made it. I'm celebrating you, 2020. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Eating healthy. Maybe even keto on a boat can be a challenge. So today I wanna to share with you a little keto fat bomb snack that you can make super easy. Keep it in the fridge and it's a great alternative to the chips and crackers and other not so healthy things that you might wanna grab. I'll just tell you up front, it's really tasty. That's what counts. And it's so simple. You don't have to bake it. You don't have to heat up the cabin. I mean, this takes like five minutes and you've got snacks for at least Three days. Uh, day and a half. <laughs> it's true. Nick is, uh, he's got kind of a bottomless pit stomach, I gotta say. Uh, yeah, it's not looking so bottomless. So give me some keto fat bombs. This is something you need to bring ahead. You're not gonna find this down here. This is unsweetened, guys. You can't get the kind with the sugar added. So unsweetened coconut flakes, start with that. Keto friendly sweetener. It's basically got erythrol, monk fruit, and stevia. So I've used about five of these packets to get about a tablespoon of sweetener. About two tablespoons of melted butter. And I'll dissolve that sweetener. I also have about a third a cup of almond flour. So that's just almonds, guys. And then we'll add a tablespoon, uh, a heaping tablespoon. I like the cocoa. <laughs> That's probably like a tablespoon and a half. Okay, then we can add these, this butter and sweetener. Get that mixed in really good. Final ingredient is peanut butter. Who doesn't love peanut butter? Mm. You could also use almond butter. It calls for about two thirds cup of peanut butter. And I'm looking at this going, you know what? That's probably a little more than two thirds. Well, that's okay. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna eyeball this. Yeah. No need to dirty an extra dish. No. You could probably do this with a spoon, but I like to feel it and get it mixed in even more. Just kind of make it into a little serving size. Nick, that'll keep you filled for at least an hour. What do you think? <laughs> 15 minutes. We got a nice southerly wind that's gonna help lift us north along the Exuma chain. We can fish for a little bit before we enter the park. I want some fish tacos. Fish tacos, huh? Well, we are not very good fisher people. We're not very lucky, or we don't know what we're doing. Probably we don't know what we're doing. But we'll give it a shot. We'll troll up the, uh, up the outside here and hopefully get an unlucky fish on the line. All right, I set a waypoint at the Exuma Land and Sea Park boundary. You can't fish in there. And they take this really seriously. Uh, there have been boats probably accidentally fishing within the park boundary on the Exuma Sound side, and they do not play. They arrest people for fishing inside the park, which I think is a great thing. Conservation really needs to happen. So we set a waypoint there so we'll know to bring in the fishing line 
before we get into trouble. It's time to claim defeat. Oh, we own defeat. Come on, fishies. Come on, buddies. Jump on that hook. You know, we don't try that hard to fish, but I also think that there's an element of luck here that we do not have. That's okay. The oceans are overfished anyway, so we're doing our best in the conservation effort. Well, we scoped it out and uh, checked out the anchoring spot and uh, it looks tenable, but they put in some nice new moorings here at the Exuman Land and Sea Park. Well, it costs a little extra to sit on a mooring. Um, we've inspected these moorings and they are beefy. They're really, really strong. And we figure if we're using the mooring, we're not clawing up the bottom. And I think that goes to the purpose of having the Land and Sea Park to begin with. And that is to preserve the ecology of the area. So I'm uh, just trying to do our part. And uh, we're gonna go snorkel the famous aquarium. The Exuma Land and Sea Park is the oldest park of its kind in the world and covers 176 square miles. With the Bahamas right now moving forward with oil and gas exploration for the first time, it's important to remember that wild places don't stay wild without help. Two conservation groups in the 1950s teamed up to help create the Bahamas National Trust in 1959 to limit development and preserve and protect the environment. Here's an interesting fact. One of those conservation groups was led by the grandson of Leo Tolstoy, regarded as one of the greatest writers of all time. Today, the trust includes 32 parks covering 2.2 million acres. It's been a no-take zone since 1986. It's also been called the prettiest place from space by NASA astronauts. Even from here at sea level, we have to agree. Oh, I think I got the green flash. Shut up. All right, we're gonna go through the Pipe Creek Keys. But we are in the hunt for internet so we can upload this video. And the internet just has not been very good out in the islands. So we're coming into civilization. All right, we got 40 minutes on the video upload. We've got our masks. We are going to Staniel Key to drop off the garbage, get some groceries, get some gas, and then we'll be set for a while. Who is that masked man? You could, you're a, you're a true celebrity now. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell Nobody will know. Are. I'm Tiger Woods. You can't tell I'm not Tiger Woods? How's it going, man? Good. Good. Yeah. I remember Ivy from last time. She and I had a really deep conversation about life. So we got really lucky because the shipment came in, the ship came in on Thursday. They unloaded Friday and everything was gone. So she ordered more food. They got flown in and just stocked up today. So I got so many beautiful things from cilantro to parsley. So I'm pretty stoked. Hello, I'm good, thank you. So we could be gone for two weeks.
All right, the depth is a little bit of a problem for us. The tide's going out and we're gonna be aground here if we don't get moving real, real soon. So we're gonna get the engine started and get ourselves out of here. Kind of reenacting a scene from our our first Caribbean trip. <laughs> I think that was going on 25 years ago. Uh, I think more than that. Were we like 23 at most? Well, that's 48. <laughs> Looking out at that Caribbean sea down in Cozumel. We had our whole lives ahead of us. We had no idea what was going to happen. And now we only have a fraction of our lives <laughs> ahead of us. And we still don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> But we're now living that picture. Because that was like a one week vacation. Yeah, a one week vacation. Yeah. Now one week goes by like <laughs> that. This isn't bad. <laughs> 